But tell me a little bit, uh, you set up a school in Hollywood, didn't you, for people like yes. uh, James Garner and Steve McQueen and the others. Yes. Why would they want to learn Chinese martial art? Because of a movie role? Not really. I mean, uh, most of them, you see, uh, to me, uh, at least the way that, when, I mean, when I teach it, all type of knowledge ultimately means self-knowledge. Mm -hmm. So therefore, they are coming in to, I mean, for, uh, and ask me to teach them not so much of how to defend themselves or how to do somebody in, rather, they want to learn to express themselves through some movement, be it anger, be it uh, determination, or whatsoever. So in other words, what I'm saying, therefore, is that he is paying me to show him, in combative form, the art of expressing the human body. Which is acting, in a sense, isn't it? Well... Or it would be a useful tool for an actor to have it's, a... I mean, I might, it, it, it might sound too philosophical, but it's an acting, acting, or acting, unacting. If you... You've lost me. <laughs> <laughs> I have, right? So what I'm saying, actually, you see, I mean, it's a combination of both. I mean, here it is the natural instinct, and here is control. You are to combine the two in harmony. Not if you have one to the extreme, you will be very unscientific. If you have another to the extreme, you become all of a sudden a mechanical man, no longer a human being. So you, it is a successful combination of both. So therefore, it is not only, I mean, so therefore it's not pure naturalness or unnaturalness. The ideal is unnatural naturalness or natural unnaturalness. <laughs> Ying yang, eh? You're right, man, that's it. <laughs> uh, one of your students, um, James Coburn, played a, in a movie called Iron Man Flint, in which he used karate. Is that what he learned from you? Uh, he learned it after. Oh, after he went, not, he, oh, yeah. after he played in Iron Man right, Flint. Right. You see, actually, I do not teach, you know, karate, because I do not believe in styles anymore. I mean, I do not believe that there is such thing as, like, Chinese way of fighting or the, or the Japanese way of fighting or whatever way of fighting, because unless human beings have three arms and four legs, we will have a different form of fighting. Mm. But basically, we have only two hands and two feet. So styles tends to uh, 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 not only separate men, you know, because they have their own doctrines, and then the doctrine became the gospel truth, you know, that you cannot change, you know. And, but if you do not have styles, if you just say, well, here, here I am, you know, as, uh, as a human being, how can I express myself totally and completely? Now, that way, you won't create a style, because style is a crystallization, you know. I mean, that way, it's a process of continuing growth. You talk about uh, Chinese boxing. How does it differ from, say, our kind of boxing? Well, first, we use the feet. Uh -huh, that's, that's and then start. we use the elbow. <laughs> and you use the thumb, too. <laughs> <laughs> you name it, man. We you use it all. <laughs> you have to, you see, because, I mean, that is the expression of the human body. I mean, the f everything. I mean, you know, not just the hand. And when you're talking about combat, well, I mean, if, if, it, if it is a sport, now, now you're talking about something else. You have regulations, yeah. you have rules. But when you're talking about fighting as it is, no rules. with no rules. Not real fighting. Well, then, baby, you better train every part of your body. And when you do punch, now I'm leaning forward a little bit, yeah. hoping not to hurt any camera angle. Yeah. I mean, you've got to put the whole hip into it and snap it and get all your energy in there and make this into a weapon. I don't want to tangle you in any dark way. <laughs> that, that right now. You, but you anyway. came at me pretty fast there. What is the difference between Chinese boxing and what we see these young men doing at 8 o'clock every morning on the rooftops uh -huh. in the parks called shadow boxing, which they're always... Well, actually, you see, that is part of Chinese boxing. It is. There are so many schools. Different Everybody schools. here seems to be, you know, going like this all the time. <laughs> Well, that's good. I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm very shape. glad. I'm very glad to see that because at least somebody is caring for their own body, right? Yeah. I mean, that's a good sign. Well, it's a kind of a slow form of exercise, which is called Tai Chi Chuan. Uh -huh. I'm speaking Mandarin just now. Yeah. It, 
Cantonese Thai cocoon. <laughs> okay, and uh, it's more of an exercise for the elderly, not so much for the Give young. me a demonstration. Show me. Can you do a little bit of it? Just so I mean, the uh, hand wise is very slow. Oh, is it? And you push it out, but all the time you are keeping the continuity going, bending, stretching. Everything you know. Suppose you know. I mean, you you just keep it moving. It's like a ballet dancer there. Yeah, it is. I mean, to to them, you see, the idea is running water never grows stale. So you got to just keep on flowing. Of of all your <coughs> students, famous James Garner, Steve McQueen, Lee Marvin, James Coburn, Roman Polanski, which was the best? Who who adapted best to this Oriental form of exercise and defense? Well. Um, Depending, okay. Now, as a fighter, Steve, Steve McQueen. Now he is good in that department because that son of a gun got the toughness in him. Yeah, I you mean, see it he, on the screen. I mean, he would say, "All right, baby, here I am, man." Mm -hmm. You know, and he'll do it. Yeah. Now James Coburn is a peace-loving man. Yeah, I met him. Right. I mean, yeah. you've met him. I mean, he's really, really nice. I mean, yeah. super m mellow and all that. Yeah, I mean, is. you know. I mean, now he appreciate the philosophical part of it. Therefore, his understanding of it is deeper than Steve. So it's really hard to say. You see what I'm saying yeah. now? I see. I mean, it's. It, I mean, it's different. So, so that's. I mean, depending on what you what you see in it. Interesting. That, uh, we don't in our world. And haven't since the days of the Greeks who did combined philosophy and art with sport. But quite clearly, the Oriental attitude is that the three are facets of the same things. Man, listen, you see, really, to me, okay, to me, ultimately, martial art means honestly expressing yourself. Now, it is very difficult to do. I mean, it, it is easy for me to put on a show and be cocky yeah. and be flooded with a cocky feeling and then yeah. feel like pretty cool and all that. Or I can f make all kinds of phony thing, you see what I mean, blinded by it. Or I can show you some f really fancy movement. But to express oneself honestly, not lying to oneself, and to express myself honestly, now that, my friend, is very hard to do and you have to train you have to keep your reflexes so that when you want it it's there when you want to move you're moving and when you move you are determined to move not taking one inch not anything less than that if I want to punch I'm gonna do it man and I'm gonna do it you see so I mean so that is the type of thing you have to train yourself into it to become one with the you think yeah this is very is. unwestern this attitude I want to ask you about your movie and TV career, but first uh, we'll take a break, and I'll be back with Bruce Lee.